Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Fusco, and welcome to Bite Size Bible, where we take a bite-sized portion of scripture and we break it open and we say, what does this teach us? Who is God? Who are we? And how should we live in the world? One of the things that's so much fun about studying the Bible is that there's lots of different ways to do it. So some of you, I realize you're in community groups, small groups, and you're talking through these different sections of scriptures. Others of you, you're doing it on your own. And I do encourage you, if you're doing it on your own, to grab a journal and to be able to, to write along. And, and, and don't just skip over the question sections, but really allow God's word to not only make it into our heads, but to make the 18 inch journey down to our hearts and then out to our hands and our mouths and our feet and the way that we live. So today we're going to be looking at a, a, a very unique passage, 1 Kings chapter 21, uh, something that I'm calling the great miscalculation as we see King Ahab and his wife Jezebel making some pretty horrendous decisions and having some really, really tragic outcomes. So I am excited to be able to break this open with you today. So we're going to pick up in verse 1. I'm going to read a long section. I'm going to read 16 verses to you from 1 Kings 21. So make sure you're, you're reading along or really just stay connected in so you can understand what's happening. So it says this, 1 Kings 21, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near next to my house. And for it I will give you a vineyard better than it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. And so Ahab went into his house, sullen and displeased, because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on the bed and turned away his face, and he would not eat. But Jezebel, his wife, came in, verse 5, and said to him, Why is your spirit so sullen, and that you have not eaten any food? He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, give me your vineyard for money or else if it pleases you, I'll give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed it with his seal and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters, verse 9, saying, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people and seat two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. So the men of his city, the elders and nobles who were inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent to them as it was written in the letters which she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honors among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, saying, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and they stoned him with stones so that he died. And they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And so it was when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Now, you see all that's going on here. So, so King Ahab and his wife Jezebel had many houses. I mean, he was the king of Israel. And so he noticed that there was this vineyard of this man named Naboth in Jezreel. And he thought this would make a great vegetable garden. And so he went to Naboth and said, hey, listen, can, you know, can, I, can you give me that vineyard? I'll give you a better vineyard. I'll give you money for it. And, and Naboth was like, no, I can't give you what's for an inheritance for my family to you. And so Ahab goes home and he's sad, he's laying down, he's kind of bummed out, he won't eat. But then Jezebel came in and she heard that he wasn't eating. Why are you so sad? Why aren't you eating? 
He said, oh man, I just wanted this vineyard from Naboth and, and, and he wouldn't give it to me. And she's like, what? You're the king. You can do whatever you want to do. Don't worry. I'm going to get this thing for you. And so sure enough, using his name and his seal, she, she wrote a letter to the people in Jezreel saying, proclaim a fast, give Naboth honor, set up some liars, some people to bear false witness and, and, and say that he blasphemed God and the king and then kill him. And sure enough, all this took place and ultimately, uh, Naboth was killed and King Ahab was going to take possession of the vineyard. Now, now what does this really teach us? What really this teaches us is that the flesh is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. See, Ahab and Jezebel were two of the most wealthy people in the entire land. They had lands, all sorts of houses. But even though he had all this stuff, he was not happy until he had this man Naboth's vineyard for a vegetable garden. I know it sounds insane, but that's the problem with living life in the flesh is that the flesh is never satisfied. It never has enough. It never is truly satisfied. The only way we are truly satisfied is when we don't walk in the flesh, but we walk in the spirit because Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be satisfied. And we're ultimately satisfied in Jesus. And what I want to tell you is that unless you and I are truly satisfied in Jesus, all the ways we deal with material things, we will never have enough. There'll never be enough for us to feel comfortable because comfort is not found in things. It's found in the Lord. And the Lord wants us to really learn this. So there's a question that's coming on up. If you're in a community group, you can discuss it together. If you're on your own, take some time, pray, journal through this, and I'll be right back with you. What motivates most of your decisions? God's will or your own satisfaction? Take some time to invite the Spirit of God to search your heart and motives. What is God revealing to you? So now as we pick up in verse 17, you know, it'd be really easy for Jezebel and Ahab just to think, well, okay, we got the vineyard. Nobody knows. Even though the, the noblemen and the people who pulled off this murder for hire plot, they knew. No one's ever going to know about it, but they've forgotten there is somebody else who knows. Because look at what happens, verse 17. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tithbite, saying, Arise, go down and meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Naboth, which he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. So Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you, and I will take away your posterity, and will cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both bond and free. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord has spoken, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. Now, what we learn here is that Ahab and Jezebel made a huge mistake. One that we make is that they didn't properly count the cost. And we have to learn how to properly count the cost. See, for them... The heart wanted what the heart wanted, and they were going to do what they were going to do, use their power to get what they wanted. But what they failed to remember and count the cost is that when we sin against people, there's a people cost. But every time we sin against people, we actually first sin against God. And there is a cost because God sees everything. See, Ahab and Jezebel, because they weren't walking with the Lord, didn't realize that God knew exactly what they were doing. And now this was the last straw. God spoke to Elijah and said, I want you to go and talk to Ahab and let him know that judgment is coming. And the judgment was going to be severe. It's saying, you know, where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, they're going to lick your blood, even though you're the king. Oh yeah, your wife Jezebel, the dogs are going to eat her. 
right there in Jezreel, and we're going to cut off all of your offspring, all your, your slaves, your free people, your sons, they're all getting cut off. And really, it's, it's the, those discussions, a dog licking the blood of a king and a queen was the most disgraceful of deaths. It means that they were just there laying by the side of the road being eaten by wild animals. And, and it would have been the most disgraceful thing. But really what we learn here, of course, is that because the wages of sin is death, Ahab and Jezebel forgot to think beyond just what they wanted. They failed to think consequentially. And you and I have to make sure that we count the cost. Oftentimes in wanting what we want, in getting in the flesh, we don't realize all of the impact that it could have, not only in, in, in human terms, but also spiritually. Because all of our sins separate us from God, and God sent Jesus on a rescue mission to bring us back into relationship with him because of the sins that we've committed. Now, there's a question that's coming on up. So if you're in a group, you're going to discuss it together in a group. And if you're on your own, take some time. Let's let God apply this to our lives in ways that will be transformational. And I'll be right back with you. Describe a time you made a decision without considering the long-term consequences. What happened? Is there anything you're considering right now where you need to think more about the long-term consequences? So 1 Kings 21 ends this way, picking up in verse 25, it says, but there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. And he behaved very abominably in following idols according to all that the Amorites had done whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And so it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes and he put sackcloth on his body and he fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tithbite, saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. Even though Ahab was the worst king in the history of Israel, he was incited by his wife. He just did all these things that offended God, what we learn here is that God's mercy is extraordinary. Because upon hearing the declaration of judgment from the Lord through the prophet Elijah, Ahab truly humbled himself. He tore his clothes. That was a, an outward sign of humiliation. He put on sackcloth. It was, he made himself completely uncomfortable. And he went about mourning and fasting. He didn't eat. He was, he was broken before the Lord. And the Lord takes notice of his humiliation and says, even though this judgment is coming, I'm going to delay the calamity until he's already gone. It's going to be on his son. And, and really what we see is that God, in the uniqueness of his personality, even though judgment is deserved, our God is merciful. And in a lot of ways, that's what the good news of Jesus is all about. That although we deserve death because of our sin, God chose to send Jesus to die in our place. God's mercy is extraordinary. And no matter who you are and what you've done, you can be the recipient of God's mercy by putting your faith and trust in Jesus. So with this last question, if you're on your own, listen, don't rush through it. Let's let God do what he wants to do as we explore his mercy together. And if you're in your community group, make sure you talk about it. Go ahead. How has God shown his extraordinary mercy in your life? What has his transformation looked like? Take some time to pray and thank God for his mercy in your life and to pray for one or two people who need to encounter the mercy of Jesus for the first time. So 1 Kings chapter 21, this great miscalculation that Ahab and Jezebel has made. We see that that miscalculation has been tempered by God's great calculation where he sends Jesus to die in our place, that God's mercy 
triumphs over the, even the, the, the judgment that we deserve. And that's why, I don't know about you, I'm so grateful that I get to follow Jesus. I'm so grateful that I know that Jesus is real and that he's doing, he has done a work in my life and he is doing a work in my life and he's doing the same thing in each one of you. So thanks for spending some time with me. God bless you. I'll see you soon.